So today we've got training camp numero 10. Not a lot of notes. Um, I'm not sure if the uh, the reporters that are down there are just kind of getting burnt out or what, but there hasn't been a ton of information recently. Um, because you'll start to see, first of all, there's, there's not that many notes, and you think, well, maybe just nothing happened, and then you'll see a note that's something like, oh, so-and-so had a great catch. He's had a great day today. It's like, has he? Because that's the first I've heard about it, so I don't know. But anyways, of course, we appreciate what they're doing down there. Just be nice if, you know, tell us a little bit. Um, but again, not a lot of information, so it'll probably be a short episode. We'll rip through what we learned from training camp day number 10, and uh, we'll call it a day. So as far as the total time, it took about an hour and 51 minutes. That's the full practice. The uh, young guys, the rookies, and, and some of the other guys stayed out for about nine more minutes. So it was two hours on the dot. A couple other notes. Um, Matt LaFleur clearly wasn't happy with the practice. They uh, did not practice on Thursday like they were scheduled to. They came back to practice on Friday. And he basically said this was this was garbage, right? There's a standard standard we set here, and you guys got to get your head in the game. And this we need to do better than this. Um, he also made an interesting note about how there's a lot of unknowns when you're not playing preseason games uh, because you're just competing against yourself, which makes sense, right? First of all, and I'm sure coaches can evaluate this better than we can, but there's the whole issue of if Devonte beats Jair, what did we learn? Right? Is one bad and the other really good, or is one just so good? You know, it's that's kind of difficult. But I think the bigger issue is that you might have an offense, or Aaron Rodgers, for example, might just have Mike Pettin dialed in. Right? We we know, for example, the Packers' defense does a really good job against the Vikings' offense. But that does does that mean the? I mean, if you only saw the Packers play the Vikings, you would think that we have the best defense in football. But what happens when they play the Lions? It's a different story. What happens when they play the 49ers? So having different teams with different schemes bringing different dimensions can kind of flesh out some of those flaws that I think you're kind of missing when you're just playing against yourself right because it's the same stuff and Aaron Rodgers is good against these things okay what else well I don't know we got nothing else it's just we've got Mike Pettin's defense 24 hours a day seven days a week so uh, as far as injuries Rick Wagner was back so that was good he's got a left elbow support Yash Nijman who hasn't I don't think he's been on practice uh, this whole time is officially off of Pup. Randy Ramsey remains out. Uh, KBN Ento apparently is not only out, but he's going to be out for some time. Doesn't sound good for him. He's another one of those bubble guys that was already pretty far removed from said bubble. So he probably wasn't going to make it. And now that he's going to be gone for some time, it doesn't look good for his chances. Uh, Raven Green and Montrevious Adams are two additional guys that are not pup players that are not practicing. We know about Montrevious and his uh, foot injury and whatnot. As far as injuries during this practice, Zedarius, there was a real big scare, something we got familiar with last year where he's rolling around on the ground, looks like he's in a lot of pain and he comes right back out. But uh, Zedarius and Trayvon Hester went down at similar times. Uh, Zedarius very quickly was up, kind of walking it off and then went back in to go play. He probably won't be back out for some time for the exact same reason, right? A lot of these guys that aren't practicing, not exactly Montrevious, but a lot of the, the high importance veterans like Jair and Zadarius and even Wagner probably are guys that, you know, again, either you're 100% or you don't play. If you're 95%, I'm not putting you out there because that 5%, it's just not worth it, right? Especially for a guy like Zadarius who, he's ready, man. I mean, he, what, what do we need to coach? Not much. You know, it's, it's not like... Uh, A.J. Dillon, who absolutely needs as many reps as is humanly possible to get up to speed. It's just, you know, it's not worth it. Um, Dexter Williams also, I believe this was during the, the nine-minute rookie period, uh, went down. Um, that one also, they were saying he looked like he was in a lot of pain, but he got up, he jogged it off, and he's good to go. Now, Dexter's kind of one of those guys. I mean, he's not a bubble guy. I think he's going to make the team. Could be wrong. Some people disagree with that. I think he's going to, at least in some capacity. Um... Is he the kind of guy they're going to try to push a little bit? Like, you know, he's 75%. Let's put him out there because he needs the reps. Or is he kind of one of those guys where it's like, it's not worth it. Let's let him sit. We'll see. Quarterbacks, absolutely nothing about Aaron Rodgers. Tim Boyle, uh, the only note, Tim Boyle converts second and 15 with two nice throws, including a perfectly timed ball to, and you know it's Tom Silverstein every time he says ESB. He's the only guy that refuses to get on the EQ train. So, Equinemius St. Brown for 10. I'm not hating on it. It makes sense. It's, it is literally ESB, but it's EQ, man. Uh, then the second throw hit Kumaro for a first down with a 
with a blitzer in his face on the next... Oh, blitzer isn't a person that blitzes. Never mind. It sounded like a weird word. And then Jordan Love. Uh, Jordan Love just made perhaps the, his best throw of camp. Deep corner out to Malik Turner in a perfect, perfect spot on the sideline. But then came back and fired one. At least he fired it. Behind Reggie Begleton on an in-breaker. Final note, Matt LaFleur on Jordan Love. Quote, today he was much better, more aggressive, more decisive. That's what we want to see. Getting better footwork and mechanics. Have to slow it down mentally for him. As he gets more comfortable, it'll show in his play. And as I've said with Jordan Love, if he was drafted to be the quarterback this year, I would be petrified. Being a guy that's going to sit for minimum a year, 95% it's at least two years, um, this guy is... Uh, I guess you would say on track. I mean, he's he's got plenty of time, especially with all the stuff going on and not having a lot of time to learn and everything. Baby steps are fine, right? Just low and slow, baby. Running backs, literally nothing outside of the Dexter Williams injury and a quote from uh, Matt LaFleur. The quote was thusly, Packers LaFleur on Aaron Jones. He is in better shape now, seeing more explosion and burst. Couple big holes today where you can see him accelerate through the hole. Again, would have been nice to get some kind of an update on that, but whatever. He's a great guy, so conscientious and attacks it with the right mindset. Excited having him back as our back. And I am also very excited and also excited at the prospect of locking him up long term. Just saying couple wide receiver notes that we got um alan lazard and mvs the quote on alan lazard was rogers hits lazard in the middle of the field on offense clocks it with one second left the only the only reason i even bother to put that in outside of just having no other notes to use um we're talking about critical situations we're talking about one second left this is for the game we got to get it we got to clock it he goes to alan lazard right it's worth noting and then the MVS quote uh, or tweet was, nice one-handed snag by MVS at the end of a crossing route. He's had a few nice catches today. <laughs> well, at least we've heard about that one. Again, I don't know what they're doing, man. I think they're, if they're, I don't know. I have no idea what they're doing. Only two notes on the offensive line. Uh, one is from Matt LaFleur apparently saying that, I don't know if this is speculation from the journalist that put it or if Matt LaFleur made some kind of reference to it, but it says Matt LaFleur remains in no hurry to figure out the right side of the offensive line. Could take it all the way up to game week, which is sounds crazy, but that's coming up pretty quickly. What they're referring to, I think, is just how we're going to shuffle the offense right guard and, and right tackle spot my assumption is that it's going to be billy turner and rick wagner because that was the whole thing going in a lot of people think that billy turner may push rick wagner out of that spot which i highly doubt but then you would have lane taylor there a conversation i think we should be having although i, I doubt the packers would be interested in doing this would be putting lane taylor at right guard and rick wagner at right tackle i genuinely believe that would give us the best right side of that line i, I can't even say no offense to billy turner because it is what it is but I, he was clearly the weakest spot on that line, and I, as, as much as I haven't been a huge Lane Taylor fan, saying that I think he's he's an elite backup and sort of a mediocre guard, I still think he's better than Billy Turner. I know we paid him a bunch of money, but I kind of don't care. I just want the best offensive line, and I believe, and, and, and it's fair to note that Rick Wagner did take a step back last year, but it's also fair to note that he was injured. He's been a very solid right tackle for a very long time, so unless he's just completely broken and we just can't utilize him, and he is injured again, so there's that concern. Um, and unless there is a concern that he just can't hack it and he officially fell off a cliff, kind of like what would happen when we picked up uh, Jimmy Graham, where it's like at least he had a little bit to offer Seattle, and then he comes here and there's just nothing left. Um, unless that's the case, which in which case then it would be Lane Taylor and Billy Turner, and that would be the right decision, probably. Um, yeah, I, I, again, it seems fairly obvious it's Billy Turner and Rick Wagner, but those are the, that's that's the shuffling that's taking place as best as i can tell forgot the elton jenkin notes uh one note on final second and long drill guard elton jenkins picks up a zadaria smith blitz allows aaron Rodgers to throw deep to alan lazard don't know what happened on that pass it could have been actually the the game winner i believe mason crosby nailed a uh, field goal on that to to score the points whatever right it's a two minute drill so I mean, again, the default is that the offensive line typically wins, but it's still cool to hear Zadarius is coming in to wreck Elton Jenkins' world, and, and Elton is just like, nah, that, that's that's probably not going to work. <laughs> feels good, man. It feels real good. I'm, I'm excited about that guy. I really am. We've got no defensive line notes, but quite a few edge rush. Um, again, the, the, the guys on the edge are continuing to excite us. Not only is Zadarius still dominant, 
Um, Rashawn is just continuing his his absolute destruction of everybody in front of him. But also those those number four edge rushers that I talked about needing to be at least in the podcast, which I think is that way. I'm not positive. Um, that number four spot, those guys are continuing to push. So anyways, Zadarius notices. Zadarius Smith in prime pass rushing form in one-on-one. Blew away Billy Turner on one rush and Lucas Patrick in another. This happened all last year. Um, he hasn't really been practicing, but it's nice that he came back. Obviously, he just lost to Elton Jenkins in that one uh, stunt to the inside. But again, you get him in one-on-ones, and he just just makes easy work of everybody. And again, Billy Turner is not Elton Jenkins. Just saying. Uh, I'm going to skip Rashawn Gary because I'm most excited about him. I'm going to talk about Jonathan Garvin, his one note. Jonathan Garvin has two nice rushes as well in one-on-ones. Don't know against who, don't have a lot of details, but... Again, the, the folks were uh, not feeling it today. And then the Rashawn Gary notes, uh, Rashawn Gary just pulled up the old hump move for one of the prettier rushes of one-on-one this camp. So he's pulling the old, I called it the swim move. Apparently, it, a lot of people call it the hump move. I don't know if that's the official term. I will always and forever call it the swim move. That's what my dad called it. That's what I call it. Um, if you don't know what it is, you can find it all over the place. Reggie White's pass rush move where he just basically hooks the guy underneath and just launches him. I mean, he's literally lifting. Well, let me, let me describe it to you by describing what Rashawn Gary just did. Highlight was Rashawn Gary picking up 300-pound tackle John LeGlue and throwing him to the ground. That's what the hump or swim move essentially looked like when Reggie White did it. Now, remember, Reggie White was a big man. The fact that Rashawn Gary, who was cutting down, actually, I think he gained weight, but still, he looks super trim. The fact that he's throwing around 300-pound tackles, again, remember, this guy's a physical freak. He's just different. He has different DNA. He's a freak. So we don't know what this is going to translate to in the regular season, but if you're one of the people that's been very anti-Rashawn Gary... I would very slowly just fade away into the darkness, hope that people pretend or hope that people forget that you were one of the ones just blowing off at the mouth about how trash he is and how much you hate him and how much we should have got Brian Burns and everything else. Just slowly fade off, wait this one out, and if he has a bad season, maybe about the midway point, if he still looks terrible, or not even still, I don't think he looked terrible last year, but if he looks terrible... Maybe then slowly start to fade into this scene, but I, w- I would definitely slowly start backing away. Um, final note on Rashawn Gary, Matt LaFleur's impression of Rashawn Gary so far, quote, I think Rashawn is extremely talented. He's done a really nice job in being violent with his hands and getting the offensive lineman's hands off of him. Oh, man, I'm excited about Gary. I'm just excited about, I'm just excited about ex- being excited today. No linebacker notes either, so cornerback up next i think i'm just going to combine the last three even though the three different positions because there's only three more notes so uh, the only note that i saw on cornerback was josh jackson who is continuing to impress very very talented guy at least in so far as we've learned this offseason josh jackson with another pass breakup no refs this year but seems to be doing a better job anticipating when the ball's in the air which is kind of his whole thing i think he's going to struggle with man coverage because that was never his thing he's kind of a zone guy so you know, tracking and staying with a guy or whatever. But as far as playing safety, and I'm not advocating moving him to safety, but as far as like that job where he can kind of see the quarterback and and the corner or in the wide receiver and just kind of play the ball, he's really good at that. The timing, the hands. I mean, that's what he did in college was just get. I think he led college football in picks or something. He's 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 a talented guy. It's just about getting that out of him. And as I've said a thousand times now, they needed to put him just in one spot and let him learn, and that's what they're doing, and it's obviously paying dividends. Um, Adrian Amos is the one note for safety. In second and long drill, Adrian Amos with a perfectly timed blitz that would have been a sack on Aaron Rodgers. And then finally, and this is a little bit upsetting, Crosby off today, just five of eight inside the Hudson Center for a couple reasons. Number one, it's never good to see Crosby in a slump because that's one of those things where you hope he doesn't get inside of his head. It's inside the Hudson Center, so it's there's no wind or anything. And then third, this is the second day in a row that we've heard this. Now, I blamed Hunter Bradley for it the other day because he had one bad snap, which really, I mean, you can blame him for one, but he missed several. Um, and now he's five of eight, so maybe there is an issue with the, the, the snapping and holding or whatever that's going on that, that they are to blame, but Um, I don't want this to continue because this can be catastrophic. As everybody in the NFL knows, when when a team doesn't have a good kicker, the Packers remember when Crosby hit a slump, it was ugly. We've seen teams get eliminated from the playoffs 
Bears, double doink on bad kickers. The, the Vikings have struggled through that. Um, it's pretty devastating. It's, it's, it's As I've always said, it, people hate when you draft kickers and punters or whatever, and they think they act like it doesn't matter until they have a bad one. Then you realize how much it absolutely matters. So um, that's it for the notes on that. So that's going to be it. I was trying to find information on if there's more training camp. I also wanted to find out if there's college football. Um, according to some people, college football starts today. And then I read an article that said it starts next week. And then I went to Google and it says dates to be determined, which I feel like if it was starting in a couple hours, TBD would be um, incorrect. So I have no idea. I can't find any information anywhere. So... I know nothing. Nobody knows anything. Everything is just kind of last minute. Figure it out, fend for yourself. If there's training camp, I'll try to get you an update. If there's not, we'll do something else. I don't know what we're doing. But have a good day. Oh, check out Packernet.com. Check out Fan2FanNetwork.com, as well as the fan fan network YouTube channel. Uh, so hard to do backwards. Check out the Packernet podcast uh, five days a week. And um, that's it. Now you can have a good day. Not before. Now you can have a good